Good February 23rd, 2015, Monday morning to everyone out there. We are looking at leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, we were leaving Las Vegas, heading towards Death Valley. And the reason I'm using this video with a lot of uh, FX on it, and the FX I use right now is from Sony Vegas. It's classic uh, portrait and sepia uh, applied in different layers. But the reason I'm using this is because it seems like a surreal environment. And uh, last night, while all the good people were watching uh, Hollywood, uh, the Oscars, the presentation of the trophies for a job well deserved, we were watching the documentary channel with an amazing documentary about China and more about that in a second. And then the other great program we watched had to do with Death Valley. And man, did I ever learn a lot of stuff. Imagine that. Television. On, and that's, this was on the Knowledge Network, British Columbia's Knowledge Network. There are programs that you can learn from. It's not just to numb your mind. Anyway, the first program we watched uh, was on China. And it was not about economics or anything like that. It was showing the beauty of China, traveling through China. And I tell you, it is breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. What a huge and beautiful country it is with a very significant history. And the people have migrated and moved around. But here's what I got out of the show and that has left an unbelievable impression. Every time they got to a major city, because they were traveling around China in the countryside, they would come through these big cities and which are economic hubs. The pollution was unimaginable. I mean, when you can see air, and you can't see air. I mean, your house has air in it. Look around right now. You don't see it. But when you're looking out, if you see something, it could be rain, like uh, water vapor in the air. It could be fog. Uh, you know, there's things in the air you see. You can see smoke, whether it's created by forest fires or chimneys. You see the ash burning from coal plants, all this. Well, China's air in the cities is beyond belief. Virtually every city they entered, you couldn't see a couple of blocks away. Cars galore, Chinese loving cars. They're selling upwards of a million cars, new cars a month, a month. Imagine that every single month, a new car, a million new cars hit the roads. So they're putting a huge uh, demand on natural resources, everything from the materials they go into making the automobiles to the oil and gas that these autos use. But they have recognized they got problems, so they are working on electric cars, alternative energy. But man, like I said, when you see the pollution, and uh, I have videos up of the pollution in the Okanagan Valley here in British Columbia, Ours is nothing compared to it, but at the same time, it's a wake-up call because I don't want our pollution comparable. I don't want it where you can't travel around because every area you go to, it's full of smog. And it's not just that it's unsightly. It's not healthy. It's not healthy, not only for the older people that are now in it, but the young people. Imagine young kids growing up in that dirty, filthy air full of all the toxins. I mean, it, it's not, it, it, it cannot go on. Our planet cannot absorb all that, and it hasn't. So anyway, that was the first show. It was breathtaking. I mean, they went to cities that had ancient history. Here's another thing that we learned, is that young people by the hordes are leaving the countryside where their families have lived for generations, grown up, young people abandoned. They're heading to the cities because that's where the jobs are. And they want to have all the shiny things that Western civilization has provided for us. They want all that shiny stuff, but you know, the dreams don't always turn out. So what they have in this one area is a bridge where people go to commit suicide. It's like the lemming. You know, you go to the big city, you want to accomplish your dreams, you want to fulfill your wishes, have all the shiny stuff. It doesn't turn out, so you go and commit suicide. It was really sad what development and uh, the future has, in some ways, brought to China. But the other show we watched 
had to do with Death Valley. And that's where we are right now. We're in Death Valley. And when Cindy and I traveled through there, I mean, the scenery is breathtaking. But I never realized how significant Death Valley was and how many things are present in Death Valley you cannot find anywhere else on our planet. Everything from specific species of uh, plants and animals to... I never realized that under Death Valley, a great part of it, there's a freshwater lake. A huge freshwater lake that is so large that it actually comes out of this huge uh, na national park, which is, you know, it's the size of, I think they said Connecticut. It's huge. And in this fresh water, get a load of this. There's a species of fish that's only found there. And these tiny little fish are only about an inch long, fully grown. They've only seen about a hundred, a little more than a hundred of them ever. You got to get down through these uh, caves and bring your diving gear and you're diving in the caves. It's dark. Uh, it's a very dangerous thing, but there's these little fish and they're very afraid that they're going to go extinct. And, uh, you know, a lot of people out there say, oh, who cares? I mean, you know, we got a lot of fresh water and Vegas needs the water. You know, the fountains and the pools and all that. They need all the fresh water. Vacationers are going there. And this could be a source of water. And uh, I was thinking about those little fish because it instantly brought back memories to me about things that uh, awaken my uh, awareness about our environment. And I still remember back in the day when there was these little fish around San Francisco that had a big impact on the way people used water for agriculture because you didn't want to get rid of the fish. And in the Pacific Northwest, another species that had a big impact on us was a spotted owl. And that was basically the first time I saw environmentalists because, you know, is it, it was almost uh, stated these nut jobs went up into the trees and chained themselves to the trees so the trees don't get down, uh, cut down because of these little owls. And who really cares, you know, if you lose owls? I mean, it's something that people in... New York, Los Angeles, they don't give a rat's ass about these little spotted owls. So why should anyone care about these little fish in uh, Death Valley or by uh, San Francisco? Here in British Columbia, in the Okanagan, we have a lot of agriculture and that has impacted a burrowing owl. These little burrowing owls that are only found in the desert have almost all vanished. You know, all these species and you know, you keep thinking, who cares? Who cares? But the point is, is that all these little things, one by one, are going away. And what does that leave for the future? As the little ones go away, sure, you know, they can tap into that fresh water, suck all the fresh water out for this generation in Vegas. But what about the next generation? What happens to the water? It's gone. It's not going to replenish itself. The fish are gone. The point that I'm trying to get at in a roundabout way is that, you know, you get rid of all the little ones one by one by one by one. Eventually, the bigger species will be going and eventually it's us. That's all that's left. And we can't survive if there's nothing else around. And by the way, big species are being impacted in many parts of the world. Uh, whether we're talking about gorillas, chimpanzees, lions, uh, elephants in Africa, all these major species are being impacted by man. And uh, it's because of poaching, because of encroachment by civilization, cities into their area. There's so many different things that are impacting their survivability that the time will come very soon when you're only going to see these things in zoos or game preserves. It's, it's a sad state. Anyway, other things that were really cool in uh, Death Valley is that there's plants there. I mean, that blew me away because the temperature is so hot. When we were there, it was uh, 47 degrees Celsius, which is upwards of 110 or whatever in Fahrenheit. It's hot, let me tell you. It's really hot. And these plants, what they do is uh, they basically store water inside of them. Something like a cup of water and they recycle it. Imagine that, you know, these stupid little plants, you know, they, they don't have us, anything that we would call intelligence, 
have evolved to recycle water so that they can survive in an environment that is so brutal and harsh. And uh, basically what they were saying is that just with a, and there is occasionally rainfall in the valley, just with a couple of rainfalls, these plants can survive upwards of 70 years. 70 years. They recycle water, need very little. There are animals that have evolved in Death Valley that do not need water in the way that we think of water, which is finding a stream or a lake and drinking from it. They absorb the water from their food. Amazing things have developed on this planet over its million years of history or hundreds of millions. And in that sense, too, Death Valley is a leader. Many of the rocks, they were talking about the plates in this, uh, on our planet and how they develop and stuff, and that a lot of what's going on is underwater. But in Death Valley, it's above water. So scientists are able to study all the different rock formations going back to the formation of our planet. It's absolutely incredible to think of that and uh, that it goes back hundreds of millions of years, not seven or eight or ten thousand years as some people would like to think. It goes back hundreds of millions of years and it's on the surface. And even right now, Death Valley is separating something like one-fifth of an inch per year, which is an inch every five years. It is opening up. It's, it's moving. It's and oh they got these mud flats you got to look this up on the internet they got these mud flaps where they got these huge boulders some of them up to 700 pounds that are moving and science cannot explain how it is but they leave these uh channels dug into the soft mud uh, along with their movements and it's absolutely an incredible place the sand dunes make their own sound as the wind goes up on them in the middle of summer, the sand dunes emit a sound. It's such an incredible place. I mean, I really want to go back there and with this newfound knowledge and even do more research, learn about this place. Amazing to think that while celebrities were sitting inside their little chamber waiting for their little trophies for work well done that they're very well compensated for, it's a whole world to learn about and that's well aside from the fact that that is cool to do it also shows diversity and uh, it doesn't matter if you're learning from television from books from movies or uh, internet there's a world of learning out there and uh, I love to learn I love to expand my knowledge as much as possible and uh, Think of this, you know, this last uh, couple of weeks they had the Davos meeting of all the great minds from around the world, all the elite, the wealthy. Uh, John Stewart on The Daily Show was talking about that upwards of 1,700 private jets descended on the area, uh, people to discuss the future, all these great brains. And I was thinking that, you know, a lot of these people, it's not that they're so brilliant. You know, they were interviewing uh, Bill Gates billionaire richest man in the world bill gates and everything that he says is being you know leaned upon like wow he's this oracle he's come to us he's going to enlighten us with everything you know what the thing with bill gates is he was at the right place at the right time and he made a ton of money it's that simple it's not a mystery guaranteed even in microsoft there's tons of people that have higher iq more intelligence more understanding more everything it's just that they didn't have that being in the right place at the right time recognition and that goes for everyone out there in youtube land or on social media you know sometimes we're made to feel like we're second-class citizens to these brilliant people you gotta listen to the experts listen to the experts because they got all the knowledge and I do grant that you know people that have a good education do know about certain things but that doesn't mean that they're a know-it-all and have all the answers because if you take a look around our planet whether we're seeing the wars the destruction of the environment uh, economic hardships you name it 
it's been brought about into some degree by the elite, by the experts, and I'm not picking on the rich or whatever, but factually, most of the people are just out working and trying to make a living. And uh, anyway, more to come on that topic. From beautiful Death Valley, California, Nevada. <laughs> 